Hi, I'm Doug Goldstein, co-author with chess grandmaster Susan Polgar of the book Rich as a King, How the Wisdom of Chess Can Make You a Grandmaster of Investing. In the book, Susan and I advise against using average annual return for financial planning. What is average annual return? Why is it a bad idea to use it for financial planning? And what's the amazing tool that expert financial planners use for making financial plans. Even though all the investment advisors I know tell their clients that past performance is no guarantee of future returns, most clients still want to know what happened in the past. Usually, they'll look at the market's past annual returns and average them. If they look over five years, they might see returns that look like this. 5%, 10%, minus 30%, 40%, 15%, add them all up and divide by the number of years that we're looking at, you get 40 divided by 5 is 8%. So the average annual return is 8%. So we've answered the first question, what is average annual return? But why is it a bad idea to use average annual return for financial planning? Imagine that a retiree believes he'll make 8% on average in the future. And imagine he's right. For example, if he has $100,000 and makes 8% each year, he'll have $8,000 to use. Enough for him, let's say, to buy his groceries. But in the real world, he'll never make exactly 8% each and every year. In an extreme case, if he makes a killing the first year with a return of 109%, what happens if his stocks crash the next year and he loses 93%? His average annual return would be 109% plus minus 93%, which is 16%. Divide that by 2 and you'll get the same average annual return as in the first example, 8%. In theory, these two examples are the same, but in real life they are quite different. If the client invests $100,000 and makes a 109% return, he'll have $209,000. Subtract the $8,000, which is the money he is going to use to buy food, and you're left with $201,000. In year number two, when his account drops by 93%, it will now be worth only around $14,000. Take out the $8,000 he needs to buy food, and he's only got $6,000 left. In both examples, the client made an average annual return of 8%. But because of the volatility of the market, in the second case, the client was basically wiped out. So even if our retiree had assumed correctly that he would make 8% on average, and by the way, who really can predict the future anyway, his plan still didn't work out. It's a bad idea to use average annual return for financial planning because the results don't necessarily reflect reality. So let's answer our third question. What's the amazing tool that expert financial planners use when making financial plans? The name of the statistical tool is called a Monte Carlo simulation. It's not only used in the world of money, but also for decision making and the fields of energy, engineering, space exploration, environment, and more. It was first used by the scientists working on the atom bomb, and it was named after the Monte Carlo Casino, where one of the scientists' uncles often gambled. Anyway, a Monte Carlo simulation builds not just one model for a possible future, but it tests hundreds or, or thousands or tens of thousands, maybe even millions of possible models. As no one can realistically predict the future, it simply tells you the odds of success. Here's a basic example. Let's say you have an investment portfolio that has a third in stocks, a third in bonds, and a third in cash. The Monte Carlo computer engine then comes up with a random number for how your portfolio might do in the first year the second year, the third year, and onwards. It then tests to see if, based on that series of returns, you would have enough money to pay the bills every month. Then the Monte Carlo simulation re-randomizes the returns and again 
tests to see if you have enough money to pay the bills every month for the rest of your life. One series of returns might look like this, minus 5%, 12%, 2.3%, 4.6%, minus 29%, 14%. You can see how this looks almost like the possible returns of a real portfolio. Another portfolio might look like this, 6%, 2%, 18%, minus 11%, minus 16%, 9%. The list goes on and on, and you can test as many models as you like. Normally, we'll test a few thousand different possibilities and then ask this question. Of the thousand models we ran, what percentage of them were successful? Would you feel comfortable if we found that 90% of the trials that we ran for you were successful? What if only 10% of the trials we ran were successful. Well, then you'd need to make some radical changes in your investments or in your spending habits. The Monte Carlo simulation makes for a better financial plan than using average annual return because it's much more flexible. It tests many possible outcomes and gives you a probability of success. So don't do a financial plan that doesn't use a Monte Carlo simulation. Please pick up a copy of Rich as a King to learn more about how to put together a financial plan that can really help you achieve your goals. Rich as a King is packed with the research that Susan Polgar and I have done that shows how the wisdom of chess can make you a grandmaster of investing. Rich as a King is the first book to incorporate chess strategies into creating personal financial success. Discover the secrets at www.richasaking.com.